you've sold the audience right now on willpower. <laughs> They're wondering <laughs> how can they increase their own? How can they cultivate it? And you've written a book just for people who are interested called Willpower with your co-authors, John and Dennis or Denny, and I forgot the last name, so I apologize. And we're going to talk about that soon. But for people who are interested, you can check out that book. It's on screen and the link is in the description. Okay. Yeah. It was John Tierney. Um, so we included some of the, the exercises that we did. Uh, so a small exercise of self-control every day um, will gradually build up your your strength. Now, again, I don't know if it gives you more willpower or it just um, makes, makes you efficient. use it better. Yeah. And, and there's also the finding we have more willpower than we think we have. Uh, I think the brain is designed to conserve energy uh, probably for sound evolutionary reasons. That's a Navy SEAL saying. So the Navy SEALs say that when you think you're done, you're only 40% done, something like that. Okay, I, I didn't know that, but uh, but I, I'm glad to hear that. And and yes, yes, they're right. I, I don't know about the precise figure of 40%, um, but uh, people can do more uh, than they think. Uh, fatigue, whether it's physical fatigue or, or depletion, which is a kind of mental fatigue, uh, the, the the body, the brain are designed to conserve energy, especially if this is all tied into the body's basic energy supply, uh, as in glucose in the bloodstream. Uh, the, the reason I think there's such a uh, bias toward uh, conserving um, is that uh, we evolved bef with uncertain food supply. You weren't sure you could get food tomorrow. And, in, and probably even more important, the immune system work, uses a lot of energy sometimes when there's a challenge. So if you got an infection in your foot, uh, in most of our evolutionary history, you know, it could kill you. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have antibiotics or anything to, to treat it. Uh, so your body had to be able to fight it off. So you don't want your... Uh, energy reserves to get dangerously low in case the immune system uh, uh, needs it. Um, now, so the the brain doesn't actually know how much energy it has. It doesn't keep an inventory of how much glucose is stored in various fat cells or something. So, uh, my impression is what it does is it uh, it it looks for signs that it's used up some. Uh, I call it counting the ashes because there's a byproduct of, of metabolizing this uh, this stuff. It counts the ashes and say, okay, I've burned a lot of energy. I should stop uh, using that and, and, and save my strength. Uh, we know with physical muscles, they are like this too. Uh, colleagues who, who study exercise and so on, and you can look at how hard a person uh, can exert pressure uh, and of course, as the experiment goes on and they do it over and over again, they get tired and they don't do it as hard. Uh, but at the end of the experiment, when they should be really tired, and they say, all right, if you can match your first one, we'll give you $5 or something like that. And they can. <laughs> they can still push as hard. Now, there is a point at which muscles don't work anymore, <coughs> uh, where they're just really starting to become in incapable uh, of doing more. Uh, but the fatigue feeling comes long before that. Uh, and uh, you are still capable of exerting maximal effort. It's just your body starts to uh, uh, conserve the energy um, more and more, uh, especially as it sees it's been using a lot. So again, we're designed to err on the side of conserving energy, which means, again, well, the Navy SEALs are right. Uh, when you think you're done, you're not done. You, you still have further reserves. Um, and as I said, lab studies with physical exertions have shown that. And and uh, we found that with the ego depletion too, that if you are depleted and they'll do worse, but if you give them an incentive or a reason to do better on the second task, uh, then they can do it. And hmm. They can do really well. Then you give them a third test, then they're really depleted. Uh, it's, not, <laughs> it's not magic. That's interesting. Let me see if I can summarize. You were saying that the brain doesn't keep a record of resources but instead looks at evidence of expenditure, and it does so by examining something called ashes. But I didn't understand what those ashes were. Oh, oh that, that was a metaphor. Um, it's, it's like 
you don't know how much wood is in the wood pile, uh, but you can tell you've already burned a whole bunch because there the fireplace is full of ashes, so maybe you shouldn't burn a lot more right now. I it's see. It's that sort of it. Uh, is it if, if glucose... I forget the chemical terms now, but glucose is the, the chemical that's the body's energy supply. And when it's processed, um, it uh, produces a byproduct uh, that the brain could tell that it, that is there. That's sort of a residue that indicates, yeah, um, a chemical reaction has happened. So uh, counting the ashes is just my uh, non-brain expert uh, way of... Uh, of of thinking about how it works. The brain doesn't know how much energy is stored in the body uh, total. It, it just knows it's been using a lot and uh, or it hasn't been using a lot and so makes decisions on that basis. That's my impression. Again, although I'm not a brain expert, I wouldn't uh, put a lot of emphasis on that. And, and the work on glucose and self-control... Uh, there, there are some very strong findings, and then there are some people who don't find those things, and uh, there's some confusion about it. Uh, so, it's it's to me one of the weak points in in current knowledge on this. There are some psychological theories that are taught that are just prevalent and believed in, and I'm curious of those currently, which one do you vehemently disagree with? That's being touted as like some dogma, let's say. Are you going to give me a, ch a set of choices? No, <laughs> I don't know the psychological literature. So are there any that you disagree with that are believed wholesale nowadays? Um, all right, I'd have to think about that. Uh, a lot of people still believe that uh, uh, venting your anger is good for you, that if you're unhappy about something, you should go you know, pound... Uh, a hammer on something or hit a pillow or whatever. Uh, but it's just a big meta-analysis my, my friend Brad Bushman did. I wasn't involved, but uh, um, but I saw the paper. And that's, that's just wrong. When, when people try to deal with their anger, reducing arousal is sometimes works. Doing anything to express it or or whatever that that tends to make it worse. That's uh, that's counterproductive. It goes in in Freud's terms. It was the catharsis hypothesis that uh, that you have some energy inside that you need to let out in uh, in acts of aggression or violence. Uh, people used to argue watching a boxing match would be good for you because you could get out your aggressive impulses. Mm -hmm. But that that doesn't appear to be correct. Uh, you watch a violent boxing match. If anything, it makes you more aggressive. For most people, it has no effect, but it, it doesn't satisfy something or reduce it. So that would be one one popular, uh, but still uh, still popular, but wrong theory. If you enjoyed this Toe clipping, then the full video is linked in the description. You should also sign up for Toe Mail, which is again in the description and the pinned comment. You'll receive immediate access to all exclusive updates from the Theories of Everything podcast. It also helps me communicate directly with the core Toe community. You'll also receive my top 10 toes. Think of it as the intellectual version of Quentin Tarantino's Obsession.